everybody. Today's story is a book called Applesauce Day. This book was written by Lisa M. Stutes, and the pictures are by Talitha Shipman. And it's about a great family tradition. So let's read. I spy the big pot on the counter right away. Hooray, I say, it's applesauce day. Hannah cheers. Ezra bangs his spoon. After breakfast, we load up the car and drive to the apple orchard just outside the city. The air smells like ripe apples here. I listen to the quiet. There are no sirens or screeching tires. Only the buzzing of bees and leaves rustling in the wind. Then Hannah calls my name. She's on her tippy toes, tugging at an apple. I show her the trick Dad taught me last year. Twist and pull. The apple pops right off. Dad winks at me and we get to work. Mom and Dad pick the high apples. Hannah and I pick the low ones. Ezra helps too. Soon the baskets are full of rosy apples, ready to be smooshed into sweet, tangy applesauce. We pack them up and head for Grandma's big, roomy kitchen. Grandma's waiting at the door. Her smile matches mine as she hugs me tight. Ready to make applesauce, she asks. We lug the apple baskets into the kitchen and take our places. This year, Ezra gets to help too. Dad washes the apples and Grandma cuts them into quarters so they'll cook quickly. Ezra drops the apple quarters into the big steel pot. Thunk, thunk, thunk. It's heavy and wide and holds lots of apples. The perfect pot for applesauce, Grandma says. It looks like a regular pot to me. As we work, Mom tells us how she helped Grandma carry bushels of apples home from the market in their quiet Ohio town, and how they cooked them in this very pot when she was a little girl. Grandma tells us how she helped her mother pick apples from the old apple tree behind their house on the windy Iowa prairie, and how they cooked them in this pot when she was a little girl. I look at the pot again. I wonder how many apples it has cooked and what kind of stories it could tell if pots could talk. Soon the warm scent of cooking apples fills the air. Their skin fade to pink as the apples melt into mush. Every now and then, an air bubble rises to the surface. Blurp, blurp, blurp. Mom scoops the hot apple mush into the food mill. Hannah and I take turns cranking the handle and pressing the apples into the funnel at the top. Crank, squish, crankity, squish. Applesauce squishes through the strainer and flows like a river into the pan waiting below. Peels and seeds drop out, the end into a bowl. I dip my finger into the applesauce for a taste. It's so sweet it doesn't really need any sugar, but we add a little anyway. Then we scoop the applesauce into containers. By now our stomachs are rumbling. Grandma sets out a plate of sandwiches and a big bowl of warm applesauce. She sprinkles cinnamon on top. Mmm. We all take heaping helpings and then seconds. Ezra licks the bowl. Then we go back to work. Cutting. And cooking. And cranking. Crank, squish. Crankety squish. Until the baskets are empty and the containers are full. 
We fill grandma's big freezer and pack the rest in our car. Finally, we say our goodbyes and head for home. Tired and sticky, but full of stories and smiles and applesauce. The car grows quiet. I run my finger over the scratches in the old metal pot. Someday, I think, when I grow up, I will cook apples in this very special pot on Applesauce Day. And there's even an applesauce recipe in the back of the book. All right, so that's our book today. You know, my mom and our family actually have a tradition kind of like this, only my mom makes apple butter and she has a special pot and those special things too. So I hope you get to create a new family tradition with your family. I'll see you tomorrow.